Caffeinated Thoughts Podcast. This is Shane Vanderhart. We've got a great show coming up. There's been a lot of talk about the hurricane recovery, in particular with Puerto Rico. And coming up, I'm going to be talking to David Melber, who is the Vice President of Send Relief, which is a, a program, a ministry of the North American Mission Board of the Southern Baptist Convention. Uh, the Southern Baptists have been an, heavily involved in, in disaster relief, in particular with hurricane relief. Uh, one of, I think, one of the leading uh, non uh, non governmental organizations to to uh, get you know boots on the ground um, and respond to needs uh, present when it comes to uh, different hurricanes and flooding and tornadoes. Uh, so we got we want to talk to uh, David about what they do and and what they're seeing currently with. Uh, hurricane relief with uh, recovery efforts with Hurricane Harvey, Hur- Hurricane Irma, and of course Hurricane Maria that recently hit Puerto Rico. But first, uh, a word from our sponsors. At American Principles Project, we believe that human dignity should be at the heart of public policy. We work in all 50 states and in Washington, D.C. to promote life, religious freedom, local control over education, authentic economic progress for working Americans, and a return to constitutional principles such as federalism. Want to help American Principles Project? Visit our website today, AmericanPrinciplesProject.org. That's AmericanPrinciplesProject.org. Sign up for email updates. Help us out. We want to work with you. That's AmericanPrinciplesProject.org. Hi, this is Brian Myers. When I needed a better life insurance plan, I found it with Travis Rizvold of Modern Woodman of America. When I first met Travis, he wasn't like some other life insurance agents that can be pushy and try to get you to buy something. Travis just made himself available to me. That was it. He told me to let him know if and when I needed anything, and he stayed in touch. When the day came and I did need to make some changes with my life insurance, Travis met with me and walked me through several options so I could make an informed decision. Ultimately, it was the best decision for my situation. So if you need a better or the best life insurance plan for you, call my friend Travis Rizvold with Modern Woodman. His number is 515-883-0029. Travis Rizvold with Modern Woodman. He can help you find the life insurance you need. Call him at 515-883-0029. Hey, welcome back. You're listening to the Caffeinated Thoughts Podcast. My name's Shane Vanderhart. And without further delay, here's my interview with David Melber, the Vice President of Sun Relief of the North American Mission Board of the Southern Baptist Convention. Um, so, David, welcome. thank you for uh, talking with us today. I just first one thing I want to ask you is, what does the uh, Sun Relief with the North American Mission Board do? Um, we basically bring awareness and create pathways for people to engage in mercy and compassion ministries, of which disaster relief is one of those particular areas. What are some of the other areas that you guys are involved with? Uh, we work uh, dealing with the general area of poverty, refugees and internationals, foster care and adoption, human trafficking, and then disaster relief. Okay. And, and with uh, disaster relief, how long how, have the Southern Baptists been involved in providing disaster relief? Uh, just over 50 years. The 50th anniversary of disaster relief was January this year, and it actually started in Texas uh, in a hurricane response down there. And it's been a you know, just an amazing 50 years of what the Lord has done through the collective and cooperating efforts of Southern Baptists across North America. So as far as when you guys provide disaster relief, um, what are what different types of things do you guys do for um, not just hurricane relief, but maybe other, other responses too? Yeah, we respond to everything from forest fires to tornadoes, earthquakes, um, you know, other type of fire, loss, um, and it, really any kind of uh, storms and, you know, not just uh, natural disasters, but, you know, in some cases man-made as well, where we'd have chaplains go in and provide emotional and spiritual care in the aftermath of just tragic events. 
right? So uh, as far as some of the services you provide for, you know, just say, for instance, with Harvey, uh, Harvey, Irma, and Maria, are you, uh, do you provide the same types of services or, are you, or, or are they somewhat customized based on the, some of the needs on the ground? Yeah, in general, in a in a flooding response, most most are pretty consistent. We we do everything from mass care feeding for those that were either evacuated or you know lost you know temporary use of their homes. We also uh, do general cleanup and what's called mud out of homes that were flooded, and then help prepare them to get to the point where you can actually rebuild and move back into that home uh, you know chainsaw teams uh, child care we provide laundry um, you know just a host of services that one might imagine you would need if you went through an event like that so distribution of supplies um, that are basic to uh, human life and then also just other other ways to help people begin to get back on their feet so what kind of an impact are you seeing um, with with you know this hurricane season so far? Uh, that the what kind of response has the church you know made to uh, to Harvey and to uh, Irma and to Maria? Yeah, I think one it, it's there's been an incredible response. I mean, these are unprecedented uh, disasters that we've experienced here, and the, the workload and the needs are really just beyond anything that would have ever been imagined. Certainly in Harvey just the number of homes that were flooded across Texas is just, um, like I say, at, a, at an unimaginable level. And, of course, what's going on in Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands with, you know, just massive loss and loss of power. So we've been very thankful for the collective response of uh, people just wanting to step up and make a difference. Um, but in spite of everything good going on, we're realizing that, you know, so much more is needed, and that's probably one of our greatest concerns as we look to the future is just, you know, we we desperately need teams and people that will continue to want to be involved or get involved for the first time in these coming months and even years uh, because of the very nature of how significant these disasters have been. Great. So have you heard any stories on the ground as far as, uh, you know, personal impacts that, that you guys are making with different families? Yeah. Um, you know, one, you know, beyond just the basic care for the physical needs, the, you know, the amount of people that have been, um, you know, one, open to just asking, why are you here and why are you doing this, which leads to the conversation of, you know, why we're there. I mean, ultimately, we're there to represent Christ in these times of disasters and be able to share that, you know, beyond this earth and the temporal things, there is, there is hope in a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, and we've just heard, you know, numerous stories of people that were, uh, you know, before this before this tragedy, they were not open or even willing to discuss things of relating to the church or to Christ. But because of the challenges that they've experienced, I mean, the Lord has just opened their hearts up, and you know, we've seen, um, you know, just hundreds and hundreds come to know Christ as Lord and Savior through this. Great, and and I'm just uh, that, that's awesome to hear. Um, also, what are some of the biggest needs that you guys have currently with with each of these uh, uh, these disasters, um, and how can people get involved? Okay, one in in the Texas area because of Hurricane Harvey and the subsequent flooding of all the rain, we continue to need um, resources for to help people rebuild and reestablish uh, their lives, which, you know, primarily at this point are still really financial where the, the most appropriate um, goods and services can be purchased for, you know, the specific communities. Secondly, we need participation with people that, you know, teams would continue to come and serve alongside local churches there to help rebuild and reestablish these communities. Um, as far as Hurricane Maria, uh, as it hit, you know, most significantly Puerto Rico with the amount of people there, and then, of course, the Virgin Islands, um, there will just be a massive amount of need there for rebuilding the entire infrastructure of those those islands. I mean, some of that will be done through our government and through 
you know, national entities that are government related. Right. But for for us as believers to come alongside the local churches in these affected areas and help them to rebuild and help get them reestablished as the pillars in the community. We just have, again, needs for, you know, not only the financial resource, but also the, the resource of human investment of time and service uh, in both Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. Okay. Have you, um, have you encountered, seen any, you know, anything more challenging in particular as far as, uh, trying to provide response to hurricane maria victims it, it seemed it, it, from from an outsider perspective it seemed like relief was starting to get there a little bit later than maybe we responded to harvey and and, and irma i mean part of that could be too it's an island nation i guess but uh or not an island yeah nation, I, but uh, well yeah, i think island. one of one of the most challenging aspects for both virgin islands and maria um, as it impacted Puerto Rico, is simply the the it affected everyone. So the logistical infrastructure to distribute anything on that island, and you know we're involved in a FEMA response uh, that by the end of this week there will be a projected six million meals per day being provided to the residents there, and. To be able to have the backflow of people, delivery vehicles, supplies, and the infrastructure to deliver that amount of meals was just, I mean, it is very complicated, right. and it took, uh, it took time. I mean, our, our government has sent drivers to Puerto Rico because so many of the, even the trucking and transport drivers in Puerto Rico, because they were impacted cannot even you know get out from their homes right to be able to drive the truck that delivers fuel into the areas or they can't you know drive trucks that would help you know move trees or different things out of there so we we and this is a collective effort between fema and red cross and other national volunteer agencies building that system to get in a sense puerto rico to the point that you can actually deliver meals like that has just taken time and it's i think just far more challenging than what you know probably the average person realizes i mean some could maybe go down there at a very small scale yeah. and do something but as far as serving the whole country it's just taking time well sir as far as you, you you know six million meals how does it compare to what you you know with with harvey and irma how many meals have you guys yeah had? there Oh, there's not anywhere near that. I mean, there, there'll be more meals served in a day in Puerto Rico than there were served in the collective response of, you know, um, you know, a week with, you know, Harvey or anything like that. So it's it's on a scale that is really unlike anything uh, that has happened. And that's a combination of shelf-stable product. It's a combination of box meals. It's a combination of Southern Baptist cooking meals in local schools. Uh, to be distributed, so it's a it's coming through a variety of sources to reach that total number. That's incredible. I, I noticed as far as you guys' involvement in fighting human trafficking, uh, I'm just kind of curious what what do Southern Baptists do uh, in regard to helping fight uh, human trafficking? Well, a couple of things. One, we want to create awareness around this is something that goes on in many communities across North America, and I think. Um, the reality is we have a lot of people across the country that believe, well, I've heard of human trafficking and it may happen in Southeast Asia or it may happen in, right. you know, certain large cities. But I think it's creating the awareness that, that every community is susceptible to this. So one, being aware. Secondly, uh, because of that awareness, being able to help teach preventable uh, steps that one could take to help people in their community avoid um, falling uh, prey to that you know, terrible uh, circumstance. And then finally, we're also involved with, you know, some partner entities where there's safe homes and different things like that that we help support kind of on the back end of human trafficking where we want to see people rescued out of that. So it's it's both not just the rescuing, but also the preventative and awareness component that we spend a lot of our efforts uh, trying to, you know, just – make our people aware where they can address it and keep people from being, uh, entering that system. 
Well, hey, David, thank you so much for the work that you do. And and I, I, I'm actually a member of the Southern Baptist Church. So I was, you know, I, I'm thrilled about the, you know, the involvement of Southern Baptists in uh, disaster relief. And, and I, I think it's a great testimony, for, you know, uh, to see the church leading in, in, in uh, response to this and how, uh, you know, how, how people have risen up to, to help and participate. And I'm, just for our listeners, uh, where can people go to, learn, to donate as well as to volunteer? Yeah, uh, you can go to uh, our website at nam.net forward slash send relief. And there's steps there where you can sign up a group to participate in some of these response areas. And there's also ways that you can actually give uh, the precious resources that are needed for those that have been impacted uh, so that we can get the most appropriate supplies and life-saving uh, equipment to them on the field as soon as possible. So, again, nam.net forward slash send relief. All right, David, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. And uh, uh, right. take care. Keep hey, thank you work. for having us. Very welcome. Thank you. All right, bye-bye. Bye. And this concludes our podcast. Thanks for listening. I hope you found that interview informational. Don't forget to check us out at caffeinatedthoughts.com. Sign up for our emails, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. Make sure you don't miss a single update. Hey, this is Shane Vanderhart. Until next time, take care.